Hello guys, it's Meshtag here. Today I want to make a troubleshooting video for emulation station on the RG350. From all my videos, I got some feedback from you guys about weird problems using emulation station. So I decided to make this video and point out the most common problems that you guys might face when using emulation station. So let's get started. So first of all, let's talk about problems you might face when you try to set emulation station as your default launcher. In one of my previous videos, I showed you how to set emulation station as your default launcher on the RG350. Therefore, you had to copy a script over to the RG350 to make the system start up into emulation station. Whenever you edit a file or copy it over, from Windows to a Linux system, you might corrupt that file. It pretty much depends on what editor you use to open this file or to make changes to this file, but I will show you in a small example what I mean. So some of you guys reported that after you copied over my startup script, the RG350 just showed a black screen and nothing happened. To solve this, you could either just delete the script again but it's very likely that the file just got corrupted. Let me show you how a corrupted file could look like and how you can solve it. Okay, let's get started checking the startup script. Therefore, connect to your RG350 using PuTTY. If you haven't set up PuTTY to connect to your RG350, um, just download it. I put you a link in the video description and make an IP connection to um, either the USB connection uh, with the IP 10.1.1.2 or use, use your Wi-Fi address to connect to the RG350. In this example, I will use the USB connection. So just put in the IP address here, leave the port as it is, be sure the connection type is set to SSH and just open the connection. So, so this is what you get a login window and you have to log in as root and then we have to navigate to the folder where the startup script is located this is in local sbin so if you look into that folder you will find the front end start file and if we take a look at this file with for example less front end start it shows us the content of the file and for the moment everything looks fine it just has the entries that we expect to be there so we can quit this view by pressing the Q button we jump back and now we connect to our RG350 using WinSCP once again we use the USB connection to get there and we go again to the media data local sbin folder we take the front end script and now let's say we edit that script so let's say let's right click open with and maybe some of you guys choose wordpad as an editor and you will see we have the same content here now let's say we do a little change uh, for example in this section up there we could start emulation station as our default launcher so I'm gonna uncomment this line sorry and save the file okay so we saved it everything looks fine now we put that back to our RG350 say overwrite yes and now let's see how the file looks like after we edit it in Windows. So once again with less we take a look into the file front and start. And as you can see now editing this file with WordPad puts some weird line breaks at the end. You see that with the capital M's at the end of the lines. So this file is broken. The RG350 will not be able to read those lines. To fix something like that we just easily type DOS to Unix so we 
changed the format of this file from a DOS file, Windows, to a Unix file, Linux. And we want to do this with the front end start file. So hit enter. And if we look into the file again with less, you see all the line ends are fixed now. Okay, so we fixed our file, everything is fine. Now, this could solve one problem. So check if you have these corrupted line ends in your file. If this is not the problem and you're still not able to get emulation station started automatically with this script, there could be another reason. It could be related to the rights of the file. So over here you can see the attributes to the file and the little letters down here tell you that you have read, write and executable rights. And this is what we need for this file. If you don't have executable rights, so if you don't see the little X letters here, you can easily fix that as well just by typing chmod plus X front end front end start. Hit enter and you will see that we now have um, executable rights for all groups. So the first group is root, which is the root user of this device. This is the default user here. And all other users have executable rights too, so we should be fine. So if you face the problem that you don't get emulation station um, started as your default launcher on the RG350 with my script, just follow these two steps. Check the executable rights, so the attributes, and check the line endings and fix them as I showed you. If you keep editing files from your Windows uh, on the RG350, I recommend you guys using a proper editor. Don't make use of WordPad, that's a killer for files on your RG350. And don't use Notepad++. I have bad experiences with Notepad++. I recommend you guys using Microsoft Visual Studio Code. I've made good experiences with this editor, so I can really recommend it to you guys. If Emulation Station is running for you, but you face some weird crashes when you start it or you use it, it might be related to configuration files or game list files that are corrupted. Let me show you another example of files that you should take care of when you edit them. For example, let's jump back to the RG350, navigate to media data local home dot emulation station folder. There you find some configuration files that are really necessary for emulation station. So if you do some changes to these files, like for example the systems file. Keep in mind these are XML files. XML files um, are working with tags. So whenever you put an option or you change something to the file and you add a section like this, you open up a tag like this one called system and you always have to close the tag again with slash system. The same here with the name so you open up the tag name and you close it with slash name. This has to be consistent. So for each tag that opens up, there needs to be a closing tag. If you forget to close a tag, RetroArch opens this file and starts to read, but it never finds the end of a tag. So it might crash or just hang up at a certain point in your XML file, and that might lead emulation station to crash. So just be sure whenever you edit something to these files, do it with care and check for proper tags. If you face a problem when you start emulation station and open up a special system and emulation station crashes, it could be related to your game list XML file. The game list XML file contains a list of games sorted in a XML file. The name of the games sometimes contains special characters, especially for some Japanese games or some Pokemon games. Um, 
the names of the ROMs have special characters in it that XML just can't read or convert to a valid string. And if you face the problem, open up a game list for a special system in Emulation Station. For example, you change to your Sega system and you open it up and Emulation Station crashes. It could be related to your game list XML file. For example, your game list file could look like this and it contains a lot of information about the games that you have on your system. If they are probably named like the the games here, it should be fine, but some games or some ROMs could have special characters in it that should be avoided. So if you face a problem like this, just check your XML file, the game list XML file for that special system and see if you find any special characters in some of the ROMs and rename them. So these are the main problems that pointed out to make problems with Emulation Station. So if you face any problems with Emulation Station, just go and check for the points that I mentioned here and see if you can solve them the way um, I showed it to you guys. Some people in the community also reported that they face problems using Emulation Station with uh, big loads of ROMs for their system. So Emulation Station is limited in support for ROMs. It seems like more than 500 ROMs per system in Emulation Station is a problem. So you might want to keep the number of ROMs you use in Emulation Station less than 500 ROMs per system. Another problem that pointed out was that Emulation Station has a problem with subfolders. So don't make use of too many subfolders in your ROM folder. In general, I did some fixes to the configuration of Emulation Station and uploaded them to my Git repository. I will put you a link into the description of the video. So if you face problems in general, you might want to try out this new and reworked version. It's not a new version of Emulation Station. I just updated some XML files. I did some fixes in there. Some other people from the community helped making fixes to um, these XML files. So in general, uh, this version should run better. You will find it on GitHub. If you follow the link in the video description, you get to my GitHub site. And there you can download the whole archive by just clicking on that green button over here saying clone or download. Just left click on it choose download zip and it will immediately start downloading as I told you it's the same version of emulation station I just added some fixes to some of the XML files if you're interested what got fixed you can take a look at the commit page um, I always noted down what I fix in particular so this version should run better than the version that I shared with you in my first video so if you want to give this a try, just check it out. And that's it. I hope this troubleshooting guide helps some of you guys out there to get rid of their problems. Let me know in the comments if this video was helpful. That's it for today. I wish you happy gaming and hope to see you again in my next videos. Bye.